Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So yesterday, guys, I did a video, and in that video we discussed that Dan Pena clip where he says that there will be a black swan event that is going to um, affect the markets, affect cryptocurrency, affect all the markets, and uh, we we're kind of wondering, you know, where is this black swan event going to come from? Of course, you know, just by definition, a black swan event is something that comes out of nowhere that kind of blindsides us and, uh, you know, usually takes the market down. Well, I've got an update today with regards to this black swan event. I'm going to go through some other pieces of information uh, that is going to lead up to where my mind is going with this. First, I'm going to take a look at the cryptocurrency market. Uh, just briefly, Bitcoin right now trading at about 34600 and again, um, you know, not too much movement here for Bitcoin, low volatility for trading prices. Uh, and, you know, we have been seeing the same for altcoins. So nothing really exciting with regards to the spec market per se. But in the background, what is happening is more interesting, at least to me, behind the scenes. What's happening there is something that, uh, you know, I think we should be paying attention to. I saw this from XRP Crypto. Wolf Finsen says it's prioritizing digital assets now as a new key area of focus. So I think it is important, especially at this point in time, to pay attention to what the government is doing. So FinCEN says it's prioritizing digital assets as a new key area of focus. FinCEN, which aims to combat money laundering, terrorist financing, and other financial crimes, has outlined in a new report its intention to keep a close eye on convertible digital currencies, or CVCs, in its anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism national priorities report, FinCEN says CVCs have become the preferred medium of exchange for cyber criminals. Here is a quote from their report. Convertible virtual currencies have, uh, or rather also have grown as the currency of preference in a wide variety of online illicit activity. In addition of being the preferred form of payment for buying ransomware tools and services, online child exploitation material, illicit drugs, and other illicit goods online, and for the paying of ransoms to the perpetrators of ransomware attacks, CVCs often are used to layer transactions to hide the origin of money derived from illicit activity. So um, they are seeing another opportunity to crack down here on uh, CVCs. So this is not... Um, I guess your traditional definition of cryptocurrencies, but these are convertible virtual currencies, which basically falls along the same lines as cryptocurrencies. So uh, for those of you guys who do not know, convertible virtual currency, uh, these are convertible virtual currencies is an unregulated digital currency that can be used as a substitute for real and legally recognized currency, even though it does not have the status of legal tender. Convertible digital currencies are easily exchanged for fiat currencies such as dollars via cryptocurrency exchanges. So essentially what they're saying is they are unregulated cryptocurrencies that people see as having value. Let's remember, guys, how many cryptocurrencies there are in this space. Let's also remember what Brad Garlinghouse said about how many of these cryptocurrencies will likely go poof one day. 99% of cryptocurrencies, um, especially ones that don't solve a problem, are likely just going to disappear or rather, you know, be kind of regulated out of the system. Now, um, okay, so we have cryptocurrencies that have value. We have cryptocurrencies that uh, are clearly on the government's radar to, uh, you know, serve a purpose in the new financial system like XRP, for example. Okay, and I know Ripple is in court with the SEC and that's a whole separate thing, but let's try to drill down on this and uh, see if we can glean any more information from this. So, Convertible virtual currency, basically another term for cryptocurrencies that are used for nefarious activity. And, uh, you know, maybe they kind of had to phrase it in a different way and can't use, you know, can't just kind of throw around the term Bitcoin these days because now we know Bitcoin is considered legal tender in El Salvador. And uh, since that is the case, that would not fit in within this definition because these are currencies that do not have legal tender status. So, just by definition, uh, I suppose, at least in El Salvador, Bitcoin does not uh, fall under the convertible virtual currency definition anymore. So we've got that, guys. We also have this now, FinCEN. Uh, now, since they are focusing more on this, they are also hiring their first ever chief digital currency advisor. So guys, this coming from Cointelegraph. The Financial Crimes Enforcement Task Force, FinCEN, yes, the same organization that is uh, cracking down on uh, the convertible virtual currencies, has just recruited Michelle Corver, formerly of the United States Department of Justice, to serve as the agency's first chief digital currency advisor. 
In her role, Corver will be tasked with advancing FinCEN's leadership role in the digital currency space by working across internal and external partners towards strategic and innovative solutions to prevent and mitigate illicit financial practices and exploitation. So this announcement just came out on Friday. Uh, crypto investors may be familiar with Corver as uh, she previously served as digital currency counsel for the Department of Justice's criminal division. She also advised the Treasury Department's Financial Stability Oversight Council and developed policies around cryptocurrency seizure and forfeiture. Corver also spent 10 years as an assistant attorney in the office of the United States Attorney where she prosecuted cybercrime and national security offenses. Uh, as Twink, uh, sorry, as Cointelegraph reported, Corver has been involved in crypto-focused anti-money laundering operations with the Department of Homeland Security and private technology companies since 2013. So bringing in Michelle Corver, uh, clearly a heavy hitter uh, within the United States government, looking to crack down on cryptocurrency even further. So here's a quote, Michelle brings a wealth of digital currency experience and will be a tremendous leader in coordinating efforts to maximize FinCEN's contribution to the innovative potential for financial expansion of opportunity while minimizing illicit finance risk. So hiring the big guns to crack down even further. Uh, these are two separate articles regarding uh, a FinCEN story. And usually what happens is, you know, I will go to the Daily Hodel or Cointelegraph or Coindesk or wherever. And, uh, you know, you'll usually kind of find the same one story about the one body. But this is FinCEN we're talking about. And these are two separate stories, but both kind of revolving around that key point, uh, two different areas of that key point of cryptocurrency regulation in the United States. Important to note, you know, all around the world too, we are also seeing cryptocurrency regulation coming down the pipe. Now, uh, I was on a DM thread here with DJ Peter Vass, and uh, he was mentioning this. One of my friends was on a date with a former Canadian government worker, and they said in about 16 months, regulation will be going into the next level in Canada for cryptocurrency. Now, I mean, this is just a comment from a casual conversation. And so, um, yeah, I mean, there's no proof suggesting this, but, you know, considering where we are seeing the world going and where the governments of the world have been putting their resources with regards to cryptocurrency innovation, you can only imagine that this is going to come fast and furiously when it does come. So um, I got to say for all the Canadians watching the show, especially if, uh, you know, you were hearing about the Binance news last week, that Binance uh, was shutting down in Ontario. If you're a Canadian living in Ontario, have a plan in place. And so, um, you know, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about this later on in the video, not just for Canadians, but for everybody, because this potential black swan will affect anybody basically invested in cryptocurrency. Government regulation not just happening in Canada and the United States, uh, but all over the world. Now, I wanted to mention this as well, and I know I did touch on this last year, uh, you know, when the regulatory clarity wasn't as fresh in the air, when it was still kind of a distant thing way off in the future. This from Crypto underscore Dash here on Twitter, uh, and he posted this link, just reminding us, this link from last year, 2020, from the federalregister.gov. Now, for those of you guys who do not know who they are, they are a consumer financial protection bureau. So they are part of a, uh, they are a governmental body, part of the government agency. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is an agency of the United States government responsible for consumer protection in the financial sector. Now, the good news, guys. These guys, this body, this organization is tasked with uh, consumer protection of United States residents or uh, U.S. citizens. Here's the webpage from the federalregister.gov website, uh, just detailing some of the things that they were talking about back then. But I wanted to mention this to you guys to kind of, you know, maybe put your minds at ease if you are thinking about your cryptocurrency, especially if you're holding XRP. The Bureau has continued to monitor the remittance transfer market since the publication of the assessment report and observes that most of these developments continue to progress. Examples include, one, the continued growth and expanding functionality of SWIFT, global payment innovation, GPI tracking product, which can increase the amount of upfront information available to sending institutions and the expansion of major payment card networks, capacity to support cross-border payments, uh, two, the continued growth of fintech non-bank remittance transfer providers and their further expansion into partnerships and other relationships with banks and credit unions, which also allow these entities to tap into the closed network payment system that non-bank remittance transfer providers have developed, and three, the continued growth and expanding partnership of virtual currency companies such as Ripple, which offer both a payment messaging platform to support cross-border money transfers as well as a virtual currency XRP, which can be used in effect to settle those transfers. So in this particular statement, they are focusing on cross-border payments. Uh, of course, they talk about SWIFT's GPI thing. Of course, they also want to touch on fintech and non-bank remittances. 
But down here, guys, working specifically with companies such as Ripple, they name Ripple in this document, they name XRP as a virtual currency that is going to be utilized for cross-border payments. Again, this is a US government agency, and not only that, they are an agency that is tasked specifically to protect the public. So, if you're holding a convertible virtual currency, I'd be a little concerned. I mean, I'm not going to lie. However, if you are holding a cryptocurrency that, uh, you know, coming down the pipe, we are going to see that regulatory clarity for it. I really don't think there's a need to worry if that is the case. Let me continue on here, guys, because Dilip Rao here, he is a former Ripple executive. He was uh, famous for saying, cool your jets a couple of years ago when, uh, you know, asked on Twitter about XRP price and XRP utility. Uh, but here's what he posted, just something recently. Uh, a widely used digital currency could result in something akin to narrow banking with safe payments based activities segregated from banks, riskier credit provision activities. Now, this was coming from a retiring economist from the Bank of England. Uh, I will link that article in here from last week, uh, but this is from the Bank of England's website. Just thought I would point that out because we know the Bank of England is a Ripple partner. Down here, Dilip Rao continues the tweet thread by saying, payment banks are already a thing in India, for example. Uh, lead central banks, PBOC, BOE, which is the Bank of England, uh, and the European Central Bank may issue CBDC for atomic settlement with reduced counterparty risk, interest on digital cash and programmable utility, i.e. in China, uh, and three of three native blockchain tokens will need to operate alongside CBDCs and offer differentiated benefits. Wide tokenization of assets will drive new use cases and utility networks. And that is his two cents. So let me read you that last comment one more time. Native blockchain tokens will need to operate alongside CBDCs. This guy used to work for Ripple. We know that the XRPL is uh, built in interoperable to uh, work with CBDC specifically. I mean, Ripple has also created the private ledger specifically for central banks. And so he is saying, you know, these native blockchain tokens need to operate alongside CBDCs and offer differentiated benefits. And why tokenization of assets will drive new use cases and utility networks. He is talking about tokenized assets that solve problems uh, and create utility networks. So remember, the WEF paper that was just released last month. Okay, this is a PDF that I talked about already. I'll link the video up here in the top right-hand corner if you guys didn't catch that video specifically. Uh, but again, just wanted to touch on this uh, because I did cover it at length in that video. The cryptocurrencies that the World Economic Forum are already eyeing. Algorand, Cardano, Celo, XRP, Solana, and XLM. Okay, this is all listed in the World Economic Forum document from June of 2021. So Dilip Rao knows where this is going, right? Utility networks, wide tokenization, going to drive new use cases for cryptocurrency. So, you know, governments are not opposed to cryptocurrency adoption, not opposed to cryptocurrency innovation. And, uh, you know, even in the United States, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau uh, mentioning Ripple and XRP. So what is that thing? in the cryptocurrency market that uh, we might have to worry about. A potential black swan event. Well, I saw this, guys, from CNBC. They tweeted this out. Why Tether, the world's third biggest cryptocurrency, has got economists worried. Now, I'm not saying that we should be worried right yet. What I am saying <laughs> is that we should be paying attention. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding Tether. Uh, let me get into it if you guys aren't familiar with this. Tether is the third biggest cryptocurrency in the world by market value, and it's got some economists, including an official uh, at the U.S. Federal Reserve, worried. Last month, Boston Fed President Eric Rosengren raised an alarm about Tether calling it a potential financial stability risk. Meanwhile, some investors believe a loss of confidence in Tether could be crypto's black swan, an unpredictable event that would severely impact the market. The issues surrounding Tether hold significant implications for the nascent cryptocurrency world, and economists increasingly fear that it could also impact markets beyond digital currencies. Here's what you need to know. So here, it just kind of gives you guys a little bit uh, a little bit of knowledge about Tether, and uh, for those of you guys who um, might not know what Tether is, in a nutshell, it is a cryptocurrency pegged one-to-one -to, -one to the US dollar. It doesn't fluctuate in value by much. I mean, it does a little bit. However, what it is used for is for, you know, uh, volatile periods in the market. People tend to take their profits, and instead of putting it back into the US greenback, they will utilize Tether, or USDT, in order to do so, uh, in order to just to protect their gains so that they can kind of have it parked into something stable before they get back into the cryptocurrency market. So why is it controversial? And guys, I will leave this article in the description uh, if you want to read further. Some investors and economists are worried Tether's issuer doesn't have enough dollar reserves to justify its dollar peg. 
In May, Tether broke down the reserves for its stablecoin. The firm revealed that only a fraction of its holdings, only 2.9%, were in cash, while the vast majority was in commercial paper, a form of unsecured short-term debt. So basically, they are not backing this, or at least this is what is purported. They are not backing this with anything substantial. The other thing that was mentioned when this case was going on was the fact that, and uh, bear with me if, if I'm not getting this exactly correct, but I believe it was Tether was backed by the Bitcoin that it was going to eventually purchase. So it was almost kind of like this pyramid scheme of, well, it's backed by Bitcoin, but we use the Tether to buy the Bitcoin. So it was just kind of didn't really make much sense. These guys were brought into court. And the other thing is they are not regulated. So with more than $60 billion worth of tokens in circulation, Tether has more deposits than that of many U.S. banks. There have been long concerns about whether Tether is being used to manipulate Bitcoin prices. Uh, so earlier this year, the New York Attorney General's office reached a settlement with Tether and Bitfinex, an affiliated digital currency exchange. The state's top law enforcement official had accused the firm of moving hundreds of millions of dollars to cover up $850 million of losses. So there was this whole debacle as well, Tether and Bitfinex in court. And, uh, you know, the way it is looking, guys, it doesn't look good for cryptocurrencies, stable coins that are unregulated. So if you are parking your cryptocurrency gains in Tether, if you are utilizing Tether through Binance, and uh, I know in certain countries now they're cracking down on Binance. In the United States, there still is an exchange, Binance.us. But if you are utilizing Tether, all I'm saying is be careful because it might be good now, but when we see heavier cryptocurrency regulations coming down the pipe, it could be like, you know, one day you wake up and poof, what happened to Tether? Why can I not convert to Tether? Because uh, as far as I know, Tether is the one stable coin that has probably the most pairings for other cryptocurrencies on uh, many of these exchanges. But what would be even worse if you have money already parked in Tether and it got frozen or seized or whatever? I mean, I'm speculating at this point what could happen. All I'm saying is just be careful, guys. Analysts at JP Morgan have previously warned that a sudden loss of confidence in Tether could result in a severe liquidity shock to the broader cryptocurrency market. But there are also concerns that a sudden increase of Tether withdrawals could lead to a potential market contagion affecting assets beyond cryptocurrencies. So here's a quote, the future crisis could easily be triggered as these become more important sector in the financial market unless we start regulating them and making sure that there's actually a lot more stable stability to what's being marketed to the general public as a stable coin. Last week, Fitch Ratings warned a sudden mass redemption of Tether tokens could destabilize short-term credit markets. Fewer risks are posed by coins that are fully backed by safe, highly liquid assets, although authorities may still be concerned if the footprint is potentially global or systemic, the U.S. Credit Rating Agency said. Whereas stablecoins that use fractional reserves or adopt higher risk asset allocation may face a greater run risk, Tether isn't the only stablecoin out there, but it's by far the biggest and most popular one. Others include USDC and Binance USD. So there are some other options, but uh, you know, even as this article states, Tether USDT is the most popular stablecoin out there. And uh, I know I've used it. I'm sure you guys have used it with quick adoption, you know, happening uh, within the next 16 months, as purported by DJ Peter Vass here, uh, you know, through this friend that he spoke to in Canada. That is Canada, of course. We are seeing this in the United States as well and all over the world. No matter what country you're in, chances are you do need to safeguard yourself because regulatory clarity will come. And whether you guys would consider this a black swan event, it will definitely have an impact on the cryptocurrency market. So I personally think it is better to be prepared. Chances are, if you are with a reputable exchange uh, like Coinbase, like Binance.us, you know, exchanges that have had to jump through the hoops, uh, chances are you will be fine in terms of, um, you know, not having your cryptocurrency frozen or seized. For example, I think seized is a little far-fetched, but frozen, at least, you know, if, uh, you know, if, if certain cryptocurrency exchanges are coming under scrutiny by the U.S. government or whatever regulatory body, uh, we could see that, you know, where people's cryptocurrency is frozen and, uh, you know, you don't want to lose out on those gains because we know when this market rallies, it rallies hard, it rallies fast, but for a short amount of time. So you want to get your profits, you want to take them off the table, and what I was planning to do, parking them into stable coins, I was uh, entertaining the idea of using Tether at some point in time, and I know 
there has been controversy around Tether, and now that, you know, they're bringing it up again, I'm going to rethink some of my plans for some of my altcoins. Of course, the majority of my cryptocurrency holdings is in XRP, and I'm not using, nor did I plan on using Tether as an off-ramp for uh, cashing out of my XRP. So, uh, you know, I've got a few ways that I'm going to cash out. You guys should probably think about that. You know, call your exchange, especially if you're thinking of cashing out, withdrawing the cash from the exchange. You know, see what they do. See if they have different rates, you know, based on, you know, the quantity that you are withdrawing. You know, sometimes they will give you a break, too, if you're withdrawing over a certain amount. So just some food for thought to put on your plate. But that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.